Good morning from San Jose, Costa Rica. My day has just started off with an antigen test, uh, which I've taken at the lab behind me. Unfortunately, you now need one to get back into the UK. It's not ideal, it's another test you've got to do, another gamble you take, you know, if you do test positive. You're, uh, you're stuck here in Costa Rica for two weeks, probably missing Christmas as well. Um, so hopefully everything's negative uh, on that front and we're all good. And then I should get my results back within three hours today because it's one of the rapid tests. It's not like a PCR test where you wait until the next day. Um, and then when I get home, I've got to do a day two test. But anyway, I've got the rest of the day now to, uh, to explore San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Yesterday, I headed up into the mountains. Today, I'm staying in the city and seeing all the things you can can do here so uh, yeah I'll take you along with me let's go and check out what San Jose has to offer and uh, I look forward to it first stop of the day of the morning behind me Teatro Nacional I don't know if you do guided tours but it's meant to be a beautiful building both inside and out so we'll go and take a look got my ticket for the 10 o'clock tour I'm pretty excited about that and uh, we'll head inside it's a shame that outside there's you've got like builders doing some work making a load of noise and when you take a photo in front um, it's kind of got a bit of the red tape you can see there on it but not to worry the main event's inside that's what we've come to see I mean this is just the entrance so if this is a sign of things to come I think we're in for a treat of course you can go to Teatro Nacional to watch a show, but I opted for a guided tour which run daily on the hour from 9 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. Our guide was a performer there and when he isn't on stage he does tours of the building in the day. He was really insightful and showed us around the theatre, giving us plenty of information about each room. The theatre opened in 1897 after seven years of construction work and today is one of Costa Rica's most prestigious buildings thanks to its lavish interior and furnishings. Well that was a very very good tour, I recommend going there, learn a little bit about it, currently there's no place going on because of the renovation works and because of Covid, so they've got some of the actors to do the tour, so the guy giving us a tour there, he was actually an actor that performs here at this theatre, so that was a nice little added touch. I'm going to head on to the next place, I think you can see it just down there, the Metropolitan Cathedral, so uh, let's head off in that direction. This is the Metropolitan Cathedral, San Jose. We'll head inside and uh, take a look at what it looks like. Very, very nice, very uh, simplistic in its design, but you've got the stained glass windows which provide um, some detail. And then you've got a beautiful altarpiece and dome at the front. And now we're outside the front of it. Take a little look there. Might need to go over the road to get a better view. And there is that better view. I would say that's the inverse of the rest of the churches I've seen on this trip. A lot of the churches I've seen have been very grand on the outside and uh, quite plain on the inside. I'll say this is opposite. It's quite plain on the outside, uh, unassuming. On the inside, it's a lot more fancy with all its stained glass windows and stuff. So here we are next stop, National Museum of Costa Rica. And uh, it's a very impressive building. You know, the contrast to this bright yellow um, structure that looks like it maybe was once a palace with the castle turrets either side of it. And this uh, big grey thing, which essentially just looks like a massive lump of concrete. But uh, we'll head inside the gates, look like the shot there. But this actually might be the entrance, this giant orb. I'll tell you what, the student card trick works every goddamn time. I graduated four years ago and uh, almost to the day actually uh, the 6th of December 2017 that's when I graduated and uh, used my student card on still got student prices so it should have been 11 US dollars uh, but instead I got it for 6 so 5 dollars off nice bit of trickery there and uh, the first stop is the butterfly garden it's got some like massive butterflies flying around this beautiful uh, greenhouse so there's some temporary exhibitions about the wildlife and stuff and then got the history of Costa Rica in here which is what I like to learn about, I like to learn about the history of countries so this is obviously one of the perfect places to come because yeah, they've got so much to learn. So not only is this a museum about the history of Costa Rica and some of its wildlife, you've also got the unbelievable views which you can see behind me, look out to those mountains 
got the square below and then a beautiful grey concrete block that dominates the skyline in this part of the town. That was a quality museum, plenty to learn about. Um, I love that little sort of wildlife element to it because Costa Rica is known for its wildlife with the, uh, the butterfly garden. So yeah, all very well done. Beautiful building, great viewpoint. Definitely come to the National Museum of Costa Rica if you're ever in San Jose. You might not guess it by the looks of it because it looks pretty unassuming but we're about to go in the central market of uh, San Jose, Mercado Central uh, which is this, the entrance is just there so uh, we'll head inside, like you say it doesn't look like a traditional market usually you've got loads of stalls outside selling different things this is pretty, pretty chilled entrance, it's not over the top I, I don't know if they do souvenirs here, I, do, I did read on the internet that they do so uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for those, but at the moment, seeing a lot of flowers. Oh yeah, here's some souvenirs. English. No, just looking. Thank you. My English is so so. Everything that's my words. Okay. You want to write your name or ah, whatever, okay. um, wood and letter, it's free, okay. no Gracias. post. Gracias. Very compact and here, very small. Um, and again, it's not obvious that this is really a souvenir shop. Like, the only reason I saw it is because I saw these bracelets on the edge. Otherwise, probably will have walked past here, but yeah. I don't think going to get anything from there. There might be more obvious souvenir stores as we walk around the place, but uh, I'm just going to keep this in the one video of things to do here in San Jose, Costa Rica because the market's not very big so it's probably not enough for a video on its own but this is more like it this is more like your souvenir stores uh, that we used to seeing throughout Central America so far oh yeah I like these <laughs> they're good I get one of them, Pura Vida bands. I'm guessing it means like good life or something in uh, in Spanish. I'm not sure, but I've not got a wristband from here. I've got one from El Salvador there, from Panama, as you might be able to see there. This was from Guatemala. This owl one was from Nicaragua. So I need one from Costa Rica for me on. And I do like them ones. I'll go for this green one. This is a thousand, so about £1.20, so not too bad. Um, and I'll have a look. For some magnets, I do like these ones. Costa Rica. I like that one. How much are we talking? £2,000, £2.50. Not, not too bad. Quite like that one. So we'll, uh, we've got one here and a wristband. So that's about £3,000. Oh, perdón. Perdón. Gracias. That's a good start to make all this intro. Let's see. Uh, Go and have a look what else we can find. This is a pet shop of some description. Could buy myself a chicken. Oh my god, look at that little dog. Hello. Oh, feels so bad. That's honestly the cutest dog. I wish I could take it home with me. Oh, you okay? Obviously, doesn't like being in the cage. Oh, look, only tiny. That is one of the cutest puppies I've seen. I'm actually gutted. Um, <laughs> you've got to leave it there. It just looked like it was having the worst time in the cage. Yeah, I feel proper bad for it. Dogs shouldn't be lots of like that. I suppose animals shouldn't in general, but yeah. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> oh, and indeed it does. Oh, we come out here. I don't know whether this is like the local part of the market, whether this is more souvenirs. We'll soon find out, won't we? Yeah, this is very much the, uh, the street food zone here in San Jose. Mercado Central. If you want to come and get something to eat, this is the place. Come and do it. Now you've got some of the, the local stores where you can come and get your meat, your fruit and veg, anything I suppose you need grocery-wise. Cheese. I wish I was hungry right now because that would be like the perfect place to go but I'm just not at all. For some reason I think because it's hot outside, heat kills my appetite as usual but I'm hoping that maybe a bit later I'll be a bit more hungry and uh, well, if we can't find the restaurant a bit like last night, we come back here and get something to eat. 
is what I was looking for. Promotion, sales, that kind of thing. Get a couple of cheap Costa Rican uh, fridge magnets here. Oh, plenty to choose from. Got a decent selection of uh, bracelets as well. This is a more obvious entrance. I obviously went in the back way. But this looks a little bit more like a market, but still, there's not a great deal showing that that contains what we just saw inside. So we're gonna head into here, La Savannah Metropolitan Park now. Big green space in the heart of the city. Uh, you can just come here to kind of get away from it all. Does say out of the places I visited this trip uh, at the top, you probably have to put San Salvador. That was probably my favorite. I love Guatemala, but uh, El Salvador just had something a little bit different to it. There wasn't as many tourists around, which made it feel like you're experiencing something different. Um, I would say Antigua in, in Guatemala is probably number two. Guatemala City, number three. Number four, I'll probably say Panama City. And then I know this seems low down, but I'll probably put number five, San Jose, which is here. And then number six, Managua. Now, I know San Jose seems pretty low down. Um, and that's not because there's not that much going on here or, or because I don't like Costa Rica or anything. I actually probably expected this to be like the best place of, of all of them. It wasn't necessarily the one I was looking forward to the most, but I just thought it'd probably be the most impressive. And I would say the city's kind of a bit run down um, in quite a few areas. You've not got, I mean, we were in Guatemala City, everything was clean. Everything felt like it had its place. Um, there's a really good sort of transportation system and to be fair when I was coming back from the mountains yesterday the transport was brilliant here but I just don't think it was as nice as Guatemala I don't think it was as attractive um, and had quite as much to do as San Salvador and it feels a lot safer um, and a lot better built for tourists than Managua now I realize that here isn't the main place for tourists in Costa Rica. They'll go to the coast, they'll go to the national parks, and that's fair enough. It's just the way it works out. I had three weeks off work. I wanted to try and cram as many countries in as possible. I managed to get five in. This happened to be the fifth, and it just so worked out that I flew into Panama and flying back home from Costa Rica. Um, and so I only have four nights here. Um, but obviously, well, four days, I'll say, because one of the days was cut short because I, I landed at like midnight. So to be fair, I've probably not given Costa Rica a fair crack at the whip, but as far as city breaks go, I'd say San Jose's not the best. If you ever come into Costa Rica, I'd spend no more than maybe two nights here um, and then move on to probably the coast, the national parks, the things that Costa Rica really uh, is known for. I will recommend if you are in Costa Rica, do maybe stop off in San Jose for a night if you can manage it and then head on elsewhere. It's a little bit sad that this is my third to last day on my uh, final trip of 2021. It's been an unbelievable time, to be fair. I don't I think the only trip I've ever been on that has been as long as this was when I went to Mauritius when I was younger. Me and my family went for three weeks. This is two weeks and five days, so just shy of that. But it's been amazing to be able to go to so many different countries and to be fair, I've been to seven countries this year, I've taken 17 flights and I didn't even start traveling um, until towards the end of September. So we've got a lot in <laughs> towards the end of the year. Even if there have been some restrictions in place, my PCR test was negative, got the email through before. So I, I will be able to get back home and uh, I can't wait for 2022 because there'll be many more adventures. I'm just hoping um, this will be the last winter with restrictions and after that, will be absolutely sound. But yeah, hopefully 2022 is absolutely sound. Things ease up a bit more, travel will become a bit easier, life will go back to normal. Who knows what's in store for us. I spent some of the afternoon chilling out by this lake and my last full day was pretty uneventful. But the time had come to go back to the airport, although there was one last little treat for me as I saw this JetBlue aircraft with a livery featuring my favourite NFL team, the New York Jets. I then took my Iberia flight to Madrid, connected onto London and had a final leg up to Manchester before finally arriving home. 
Thank you to everyone who has watched my Central America series. I really do appreciate the support. I'll be back with some of my 2022 travels in a couple of weeks, but until then, drop a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.